Uh, there are some housekeeping rules. Uh, this session will be recorded. <laughs> uh, the recording and slides of this meetup will be made available to all attendees. Please be muted during the speaker's presentation. Questions can be submitted uh, at any time in the Q&A chat box. It is at the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, at the end of the demo, there will be a Q&A session, and please give us your feedback. Uh, so the agenda for today, uh, introductions. Uh, then we have session on Mulesoft, on using uh, secrets in Mulesoft. Uh, Ryan will be presenting a very great demo. And then in the end, we'll have a Q&A session and networking. So without any further ado, uh, my name is Asmeet Kaur, and I'm a principal consultant at Optima. I'm a Mulesoft mentor and a Mulesoft leader. Uh, I also run a podcast channel slash YouTube channel with Shubham here. Uh, it is between two meals. Please do check it out. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Shabab, now. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ismi, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Shubham. Uh, I am working as an integration engineer. And I'm also a Mulesoft mentor, meetup leader, and uh, basically a partner in crime for the YouTube channel that me and Ismi have, Between Two Meals, where we bring all things Mulesoft and much more. So that's a little bit little bit about me. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think so. We have Sadiq with us today. He's also a Mewsoft uh, mentor, a meetup leader, and also a Mewsoft ambassador, and uh, an integration specialist and solution architect uh, in, a, in a consulting firm. So Smith, if you can move on to the next slide, please. Yes, so some uh, requests to all the members. Uh, please feel free to volunteer for the future Montreal uh, group. If you guys want to be a speaker, do reach out to us and uh, we will be happy to uh, assist you. And uh, what do you expect from these meetups? You can send us an email with your expectations and we will make sure that the event reflects the same. Uh, if you have any topics or uh, anything in mind, do share with us. And uh, after the uh, demo and after this meetup, we'll be sending you a feedback form. Please fill it out. It will really help us to uh, plan for future sessions as well. And anything else, just send us an email. And about the Mewsoft community, there are some links you can uh, go to if you want to learn, if you're a beginner, learn what Mewsoft is, go to training.mewsoft.com. They have amazing content uh, on that side. And if you want to do or learn anything about uh, AnyPoint platform, you can go to anypoint.mewsoft.com and uh, also download a free trial. Any uh, um, help you need or any assistance from Mewsoft support, you can go to help.mewsoft.com. And uh, you can also become a speaker, leader, or Mewsoft mentor. Uh, just uh, you know, Google how to be a Mewsoft mentor, the first link. You can apply to be a Mewsoft mentor as well. So without further ado, uh, we have a very special guest with us today. We have Ryan Hogg. Uh, who is the CEO of Hawk Software. Uh, Ryan, uh, would you like to introduce yourself to the people? Sure, thanks, Jabam, and hello. I think I know a lot of you already. <laughs> I'm looking through this list. Uh, I see many friends. Um, so my name is Ryan Haig. I've been with uh, software for um, older. Some of you have not been alive as long as I've been doing software. <laughs> and um, But I've been doing integration, and I care about integration. I've been doing integration for a long time, and I, I found Mule when I've been doing integration. And so I think software got founded out of my desire to try to help people do it better. And that was in 2015. And uh, I have another company, Integration Quest, I founded with Diane Kessler last year to try to teach people how to do it. So that's that's what Integration Quest is all about. I've got a class coming up. Um, I just made up because of talking to you guys on LinkedIn for MUnit because there's no good classes out there about MUnit as far as I'm concerned. So I'm making one and it launches next weekend. Um, if anybody wants to come learn, learn, I've got homework. I don't, I'm not making any. So he just showed the website training.mulesoft.com. A lot of my time I spent like yesterday, I was teaching a architecture class uh, for Trailhead Academy. Um, I do that subcontract for Salesforce and I'm happy to do those. And then we're just trying to make the education that's missing, right? So that's where this 
M unit workshop. We're going to do one on composer. We went and bought our own MuleSoft license so that we can let you guys use it and go do RPA and whatever, like their private spaces, anything that's not possible in a trial account. We want to try to bring to the community too. So we're just trying to figure it out. How do we learn as how do people like us go learn how to be more powerful? Because I think integration is, it's like the most important part of software. I'm, I'm not here by accident. It's we, we're making the fabric that holds the technology of the world together. It needs to be rock solid. So uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm doing it because you guys have a YouTube. I'm announcing now that I'm 2024, probably next month, I'm launching a, a rock, rock solid integration YouTube. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to put on there. I'm going to have to learn from these experts. Um, but I think... I think it's I think it's it, there needs to be more out there on how to how to make IT dependable and reliable and reusable. And that's the architecture stuff. But you guys aren't here for architecture stuff. You guys are here for secrets. Well, it's a little bit architecture. So uh, so that's what the, the cybersecurity part is one piece of the puzzle. And it's pretty important. So so that's not my intro anymore. I'm just go. sorry. I'm supposed to just be doing intro. So that's the intro. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, now I think we begin with the presentation. Do you want to start sharing and stop sharing? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll take okay. over. Yeah. All right. So, so some of you may have come here because you care about cybersecurity. <laughs> I hope. So let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about secrets. It's just one element of cybersecurity because you know a lot of a lot of integration has many different concerns. So I decided to focus on secrets. It's no secret. That this is the first this is not the first time i've done this presentation but it is the first time i've done this presentation every time i do it i add something so you guys are definitely getting the best version of it ever because it's always every time i do it i go do a little more research and add a little more to it and i have discovered something which i'm keeping secret for a few slides so i'm not telling you what it is yet <laughs> so if you've watched the recording before of this presentation it's not this presentation it's it's an it's the montreal upgraded version <laughs> so so we're going to talk about how you what what managing the the secrets that are used to make your integrations work at an enterprise scale with your integrations so um you know out of the box mulesoft has a way to do secrets and it's nothing wrong with it it's super secure it's 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 using industry best in class um industry uh encryption algorithms um, it, it's, it's proprietary to MuleSoft. So uh, I don't know how many of you have tried to use the out of the box secure properties vault, um, with anything that's not a MuleSoft provided tool, it's not compatible. You can't use open SSL to make these secrets, um, because it doesn't encode the same. I, I was, I worked on it for like a week. Uh, you, you can't do it. <laughs> so you basically have to use MuleSoft proprietary stack, which is actually fine it uh, but but there's some limitations that i'll get to explore in a minute and that's usually what i see for mulesoft for enterprise architecture mulesoft provides a satisfactory and complete way to do these important things in our integrations like keeping secrets um and if you want something more powerful or something more flexible mulesoft makes it possible to incorporate so that thing if you want to go buy that thing right so that's we're going to look at a few more powerful and more flexible ways to accomplish the same goal of making sure that your applications, your mule integrations have the sensitive data they need, like a password or a private key or something like that so that they can work. Right. Um, so there's there, there's there's a, this whole presentation is going to be upgrades to the out of the box mule secrets. But I am not here to tell you there's anything wrong if you're doing this now. It's fine. It's secure. There's you can keep doing it, but maybe you'll see some opportunities to to do something better if you want, right? So, um, so one of the one of the key things about the uh, out of the box secrets vault is it's kind of like you, you have to you have to have the secret when you build the app, and you have to have the key when you encode the secret. So the the supply chain of the sensitive data is the same as the supply chain of the application code, right? That's part of the way that the mule soft one works and if you want to do anything more sophisticated like have different people manage the secrets you got to figure out how to share the key there's a there's a little bit of a you know if, if i was a cybersecurity auditor i might be a little worried 
And just, I would want to make sure that you have a way that you're making sure that that secret data is not disclosed to the wrong people, right? So part of, part of the challenge with secrets is that, you know, once you have a secret, like a password to a database, you're, you got the keys to the kingdom, right? <laughs> so it's a very, um, very appealing target for a attacker in your, uh, of your, of your system. So remember, let's put this in place here. Like your integrations are in the middle of all your other systems. So imagine that you're somebody trying to break in to an IT department. You would probably be pretty excited if you could break into the integrations, right? Because then you can break into everything else. It's a very appealing, the integrations in particular are a very appealing target for cybersecurity attackers, right? So the secrets in the integrations are very likely to be attacked by a bad guy, right? <laughs> so we want to have a way to manage them, right? So there's this thing you can use in your enterprise called a secret vault and our secret manager. There's different names of the product, but basically a centralized place outside of the AnyPoint platform, outside of MuleSoft, where you can manage secret data. Um, and those products have more powerful capabilities. So I want to go through a couple of capabilities you might be looking for when you go shopping. Now, some of you might already have a secret vault. And um, it's me and Shabam. I'm not looking at the chat. So if there's questions or comments or you think anything is a good reason to break in, just speak up because I can't see the meetup screen. So just break. I'm, I'm fine getting interrupted. <laughs> but um, so so if you are using a secret vault, one reason you might be using it is that you want to accomplish narrow authorizations, principle of least privilege. Let's let's talk about that tangibly. So like, for example, in a mule secure properties vault, there's one key and you could have a bunch of secrets, right? Because the application has got a single file. It's full of secret encrypted values. So it needs a single key for all the secrets. So the person who writes the secret is to be the same. Or whoever has the secret that writes the secrets, the encryption key, will also have the key to read the secrets. So something you can do with a secret vault is make that separate. The person who puts the secret in doesn't have any way to get the secret back out, right? So that's a separation of concerns, right? So now, now my writer and my reader have different privileges. That's more secure because you could have the database administrator write the secret and the mule programmer never has access to change it, right? Only the, and the database administrator can't read the other secrets, right? So another benefit of a vault is that each secret can have its own separate authorizations, right? So one application might just be able to read secret A, another application might be able to read secret B. That's possible with, with a secret vault. So we're, we're making it possible to authorize the secrets themselves and the actions on the secrets in a specific, precise way, which is much more, uh, much, it provides a lot more capability to someone who's responsible for cybersecurity at large, right? So another benefit is the, the segregation of duties and the auditing. A big part of managing a cybersecurity policy is being able to know who's allowed to do what and when they actually did it. So that you, let's say you do have a compromise or you do have a breach, you're able to go back and do forensic analysis and determine, okay, Shabam logged in on January 31st and he changed the secret for a Redis database. And then we had a break in on February 2nd on the Redis database. And now you're going to go call Shabam and see what he, what were you doing, dude? Like that, you have a record of who did what and when and when each application accessed the secrets, right? So it provides your cybersecurity team something to do if you do have a breach, right? And, and go back and retrace what happened and who did what. Um, and you can also, when you're in the, in the process of doing forensic analysis, you can, you can know who was not possibly at fault, right? So it's me didn't even have access to the vault. So she definitely didn't update the secret, right? So it had to be Shabam. I'm sorry, I'm picking on you, but right. <laughs> Cause I know that his meat didn't even have any access to it in the first place until February 1st. And the problem happened on January 31st before his meat was granted access to the, to the vault. Right. So that's what, that's something you can do if you have a separate vault with these kind of capabilities. And then the last one on, I, I want to bring attention to is there's a process you have with secrets. The longer they live, the more danger they represent. Right. So if I, if I can have a policy, you know how you get told you have to change your password all the time. 
Well, computers don't get annoyed by that. People do, right? <laughs> computers don't mind rotating their password every minute if you make them, right? They're just computers. So you can, if you have some kind of automated process and a, a system that's capable, you can automatically rotate secrets. And with, with a vault, of, some vaults allow you to automate that process so that there's no human in the process of secret rotation and then distribute the new value of the secret to the programs at runtime, which is very valuable because now the people who made the software never had access to the secret in the first place, right? If I, let's say I deploy a mule application and then I rotate the secret and the application has the new version, but I don't, that's a lot less exposure for that secret value than if I had to encrypt the secret and put it in and then deploy the mule application. So rotations, is a very powerful uh, security improvement to make the sensitive uh, data even le even uh, more difficult to steal and less valuable if you steal it because it only lasts a certain amount of time, right? So rotations is another benefit of a vault. So there's a bunch of products that let us do this. There's, there's a bunch of products. <laughs> I didn't even get them all on my slide. I, I decided to highlight some of them for a very good reason. And uh, one of those is the surprise that this is the first meetup that's ever heard about it. Um, so uh, I have three on here in blue because there are MuleSoft connectors and CyberArt Conjure didn't used to have one. So that's the surprise. That, so it's an, it's an open source product um, that's a lot like these other products. So let me just go. Through. These are systems that are provided, whether open source or proprietary, part of clouds, and they all have different sets of features. For, for managing secrets. But something that they all do is give you a central secure system where the secrets can be stored and managed and rotated, right? So today, and we're gonna do Azure Key Vault in today's presentation because that's the one I got the whole demo built for and I'm very familiar with it. Um, AWS Secrets Manager is a little bit less powerful, I'm gonna show you that, than, than Azure Key Vault, but it's certainly uh, more powerful than MuleSoft's Secrets Vault, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there's CyberArt Conjure. Uh, there's two versions of that one. There's an open source and there's an enterprise edition. And I don't know anything about the enterprise edition because I haven't decided to have a meeting with their sales team yet. And that's how you find out about it. So I know I learned a little bit about the open source um, this week preparing for this meetup. So I, I've kind of got my own set up inside my Kubernetes and learning how to use it, but it's not ready for the demo. So I'm just, I'm going to show you what I know about Conjure without getting to show you a full demo. Yeah. So there's a few more on here that I don't want to uh, ignore because they're pretty relevant to integrations at our, you know, at our different enterprises. HashiCorp Vault is kind of the king. It's kind of the most powerful one. It's been out the longest. They, they're used by all the banks. So the HashiCorp is probably the most, the, the, the one that's like top of the list, right? Kind of like MuleSoft. Honestly, I do believe MuleSoft is obviously the best vendor for integrations in the world. I, I I can't find anybody who's close and I've been looking. And so HashiCorp is like that for secrets. They're obviously way more powerful than everybody else. Um, and I got lucky enough, there's a field CTO for HashiCorp who moved into my city a month ago his, and he started, so he goes to my meetups and we can talk. So I've got a little bit of inside information about HashiCorp Vault. There's a little bit of, there's a new product for HashiCorp that's a lot closer to Azure Key Vault because HashiCorp Vault is very complicated mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the most powerful one and it's also extremely the configuration of it you have to under you have to learn how to use it <laughs> right so as you, but there's now a cloud version of it called hashicorp vault secrets that is simple kind of like the rest of these right um, and it's just a secret store it doesn't have a lot of the other features so they cut down the features and they made a cloud hosted hashicorp vault it's called hashicorp vault secrets and uh i'm I may or may not be working on a connector for that. So there's no connector for it. Now, the, the top three are in blue because we do have MuleSoft. The top two, Azure Key Vault and AWS Secrets Manager, MuleSoft publishes connectors for those. And then CyberArk Conjure, there's a community connector in progress by the CyberArk people. So it's a, it, you know, it's probably pretty good. Um, so then Google, Google Secrets Manager is an important secret system and we need a connector. So I put it in big letters on here because... I'm asking you guys if you will please help me make a connector for it because I'm only going to work on HashiCorp next. So um, I have time to do some open source work, but I don't have time to do all of it by myself. That's the benefit of open source. So if any of you guys know a little Java, I can use some help. 
<laughs> so Google Secret Manager and Kubernetes Secrets definitely need connectors. And as far as I can tell, there aren't any. So please help. <laughs> right. HashiCorp Vault used to have a connector like Mule 3. And I heard from some people, I heard a rumor that there might be a connector, connector a community connector for Mule 4. I went looking and haven't found it yet. So if you want to put it in the chat or if somebody wants to speak up and interrupt me, I would love to know if there was one. It should have one, but I haven't seen it. So Funny I'm going to work on HashiCorp. Yeah, go ahead. Funny enough, Ryan, uh, for HashiCorp, like our company, we did, we did build a custom connector for us, but uh, we built it in Java 9, which is not supported by Cloud Hub. So it's working in any one studio, but not working in Cloud Hub. So, so we have to rebuild our design. Well, I don't know if your company can do it. Mm -hmm. I started last summer a GitHub org for open source connectors called Anypoint Cloud, and I would love some contributions. Oh. I only have two repositories so far. So <laughs> I would love to, I'll help manage it. I'll help do the community pull requests. You know, I, in order to have an open source community, we got to have some basic yeah. admin work. So yeah. Yeah. I'm volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, we also have one question in regards to the auditing. So that is something I also don't know. So with our MuSoft auditing, is it possible if someone changes like properties in uh, any Mule application, we'll be able to audit that as well? Properties. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yes, that is auditable. So okay. this is not, yeah, you can't use secure properties if you want to use Runtime Manager to mm -hmm. edit your settings because these properties cannot be overridden by Runtime Manager properties. But you can leave them out and use your DevOps process and your administration tool to update the properties. And there's a way to hide them. I didn't put that on my slide. There's a way to hide them in Cloud Hub 1. There's mm -hmm. a way to hide them in Cloud Hub 2. And for Runtime Fabric and, and for hybrid, you're going to have to do some engineering. Um, but if you're in Cloud Hub, yeah, you can rotate the secrets and the MuleSoft, the Mule Access Management Audit Log Viewer will always have that record. So that's a good, that is, that's a good benefit. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Thanks for uh, so giving me the softball. <laughs> uh, also, we have one more question from Edward. Uh, he says that, um, do you not believe in IBM integrations at all, or this is a close competitor? For HashiCorp? Yeah. IBM? Yep. Uh, it's at the bottom because the ones at the bottom are the ones I haven't tried to learn yet. So they might be good. <laughs> I did. I went and did a, a survey and found a bunch of secrets vendors, but I have. So IBM, if you're telling me, and I would love to take some input in the chat out of the ones I haven't gone and investigated yet, which one I should do next. And if you think it's IBM, I had a guy tell me the psychotic one was good, but I haven't checked that one yet either. So if you, if I left any out or if you recommend I add, because when I do, if I do the presentation again in six months, I might've learned a new one, right? So mm -hmm. I would. IBM is certainly, I heard the, thanks for the tip. <laughs> Was that any more questions? No, I think we should be good to go. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. So the, the ones that are in big letters are just here. You know, I don't mind you guys, if you've been to my classes, you may have, I don't mind putting my opinions <laughs> in my presentation. So the ones that are in big letters are the ones I've decided to invest my time in. Um, and uh, the ones in little letters are, you know, I'm kind of looking at them. I'm kind of curious. So <laughs> if, if I would take your your recommendations. <laughs> oh, I just noticed I do have on my other slide, um, on my other screen, Shabam and Ismeet, I do have the Slack up. So even though I can't see Bevy, if you want to hit me in Slack, that'll be another way to get my attention. <laughs> okay, I can see yeah. it on the other screen. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, <laughs> so, one more question we have. Uh, can you provide a web app to encrypt without a key to developers? That's uh, Edward. Yeah, Edward. So can I provide a web app to encrypt without a key to developers with the, the answer to how the properties are given by whoever has the sense the, the secret is different based on all these systems. So are you talking about Cloud Hub out of the box or one of these systems? The, uh, because the the way that the system, I'm going to show you one of them. The way that the systems 
allow you to edit the secrets. Each one has their own. They have their own editor screens. Um, or some of them are command line. Some of them are web. You mentioned like a Cloud Hub out of the box indeed. Oh, yeah. Um, so for Cloud Hub Runtime Manager, there's, Runtime Manager has a web app and lets you edit them. For this one, um, there's really two ways to edit these secrets, and I do not use the web app. So somebody made a web app. It's running on Cloud Hub, and I'm not sending my secrets to that web app. I know it's probably harmless, but you never know, right? So the web is not on your computer, and secrets are very sensitive pieces of information. So I refuse to send my secret to a website. <laughs> I'm going to use my local machine to encrypt it if I'm going to encrypt it. So um, when you look at these other vaults, the, the with seek with anything secure, you have to analyze your what I call your chain of custody. So the secret comes to you somehow, and then you give it to a piece of software somehow, and there's just another step where it gets provided to the next piece of software as a chain of custody. And any point along the chain of custody that is insecure is the one the hacker's going to go attack, right? He's going to go for the most obvious. He's not going to go attack the hard spot. Like if you have a house with three locks on your door and no locks on your window, which way is the burglar going to go in? <laughs> it's going to go in the open window, right? He doesn't care if you have all those locks on your door. So I am not putting my secret on a web app that all the hackers know about. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're probably attacking it. And I'm not saying it's been compromised. I'm just not taking that risk, you know? So I, with, with the secure properties tool, I always use the command line tool and I always encrypt locally. And for my clients, I don't do it on my laptop. So I'm a consultant, right? So for my clients, I use their virtual machine. So I'm not even, the secret never lands on my laptop. It's only inside the virtual machine on their infrastructure. So you got to be real careful <laughs> with, with secrets because once it gets out, it's out and it's your fault, you know? So I don't know if that's what the question is, but there is a web app available. I am just not recommending using it. That's all. Just my opinion. <laughs> but this is a whole presentation about my opinion. So that looks um, I like a forward-looking statement. Go the ahead. The web app that is present, uh, there's a full source code present on GitHub, and you can download it and run it locally. Also. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I can send. Yeah, I can send it the link. I okay. Yeah, if you run your own copy, that's a whole different. You can do that. Posture. That's yeah. very good. Yeah, cool. Yeah, please send that. I didn't have that. I'll add it to the presentation. Appreciate that. I love this community, man. Mm. Okay, let's start. So here's the, the AWS Secrets Manager model. And I kind of wanted to put it in context with Mule, right? So you got an application that's running that needs a secret to go do something, right? It needs a secret to go access another service like in like Redis or a database or a, a, maybe it's a system API and you're running a process API or something. So that they, in order to get a copy of the secret, Instead of embedding it in the application code, the application can go at runtime and go get the secret out of a vault. So AWS has one called Secrets Manager, and you can create secrets inside it, and it can have a, its own rotation policy. And, uh, and then it has a way. It's not API-led. It's very point-to-point, -point, but it has a little Lambda thing. So you can make the Secrets Manager invoke some code anytime it modifies the secret um, for example, it can go to the database and change the secret there too, right? So that way you can have an automatic rotation process, which I think is excellent. I think it's a really good, um, uh, very secure policy, right? So it'll rotate the secrets and it'll go put them where they need to go. And your application doesn't know if it was rotated or not. Just anytime it runs, it goes and gets the secret and uses it. So your application doesn't even have to, well, with the MuleSoft connector, your application has to be restarted to get the new secret um, with AWS Secret Manager. Um, but it does give you a nice way for some party like administrators who have access to AWS be the, to be the ones that to provide the secrets and to have automatic rotation. So that's kind of the way it works with AWS Secrets Manager. And remember, and this does have a MuleSoft um, provided select connector, which doesn't cost any more money. So it's just, it's MuleSoft supported and it's free and you can use it. It provides properties. Um, so then Azure Key Vault, 
works very similarly, but it does not have automatic rotation. So you'd have to make the rotation yourself. There's Azure has a lot of tools to do that, but out of the, the, the product itself doesn't have its own automatic rotation. It does have secret expiration, which I like a lot, um, but it doesn't have rotation. One difference is Azure allows you to create multiple vaults in your account. Where Azure, where Amazon has one secrets manager product where you create only you create multiple secrets inside it. So Azure has like a second level of management where there's there's multiple vaults in Azure and each vault can have many secrets, right? Um, and uh, the, the application has, there's actually two MuleSoft connectors for Azure Key Vault and I like one more than the other and you're gonna see why. Um, but it's the same different, at runtime it's the same result though. The application can get a secret and go do something. I was waiting to see if you guys came off mute. Okay, <laughs> that's what you can do with Azure Key Vault. So um, what's a secret exactly? Key Vault has more than one sensitive type of sensitive data it can manage. And it's used for, more, for lots of things inside Azure. So you can manage secrets and you can also manage certificates and keys and none of the MuleSoft connectors work with the certificates part. I mean, one says that it does, but it doesn't work because, and I, I might be able to go deeper on why, it doesn't work in a Mule app. Um, um, it's, it's, you can retrieve this certificate, but you can't do anything with it. <laughs> um, the secrets you can use though. So there's certificates and there's secrets and there's keys and certificates and keys are linked inside Azure Key Vault. So the part we're concerned most about in this presentation is the secrets. So Azure Key Vault allows you to create these units called secrets and they're a little bit different than aws secrets um, because and actually they're different than hashicorp many other products are not like this one key vault secret is a single value so a secret has a name and it has a value and that's it right with aws and with hashicorp a secret can have many key values in it so you can have a secret that's a bunch of different values kind of like a properties file right but in azure your secrets are one value Right. And that value can have activation. So it, if you put a secret in, it doesn't have to be available today. Right. So I can have a secret that is planned to be used on Sunday. Right. And that way I can set the secret now and I can put it into the system and then later it'll become active. Right. And I can also have an expiration, which is kind of nice. Right. Um, so the way you control access to the secrets, both on read and write, is with Azure Active Directory permissions, which is now called Microsoft Entra. Microsoft decided to rename their security, their most popular security tool. So it's now called E-N-T-R-A Entra. And uh, uh, the way that you, you can control or configure who writes the secrets and who reads the secrets is through Microsoft Entra, which has this extra thing called managed identity, which is really cool. Um, so Entra is a very powerful security model. It's also com complex. You know, something so that you'll notice in software is powerful things tend to be complex. Um, so you, sometimes you have to go read a lot of documentation to figure out the way policies and roles and managed identities and service principles. Um, that's all from the world of Entra, which used to be called Azure Active Directory. And it's fully incorporated in Azure Key Vault. So the 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 way that you manage the security of the secrets is through Microsoft Entra. Um, there is an old legacy model um, called vault policies that you just shouldn't use. I mean, it's available. It's like a five to 10 year old security model for vaults that was less powerful than Entra. And it's uh, it's got some security uh, concerns anyway. It's it, Entra is definitely more secure and easier to use. So I recommend that you use Azure Active Directory permissions. The MuleSoft connector doesn't require you to. I just recommend that you do. Um, and then, of course, it does all the auditing that we previously discussed. So the secrets are the unit that we're managing in Key Vault. Um, so I'm showing you a lot about Key Vault because that's what our demo is going to be, right? So uh, the, the Azure Key Vault, um, you have to authenticate to the Azure Key Vault. So that means inside Azure, you have to make an identity of some kind that Mule is gonna use to access the Key Vault, right? So we're gonna do that with an app registration. Um, that's the that's the user interface name for the, the, the identity you're creating. And behind the scenes, what that creates is an object called a service principle that can be used to associate permissions, 
So inside Azure, you're getting a service principle and you're making it by creating an app registration. Right? So we're going to do that together in a minute. And that service principle has to have a secret of its own, at least for Mule to work. That's how it has to work. Um, and that's called a client secret, which is now going to be the item that you have to secure because that's the secret to get the other secrets. So you got to be very careful with that one. So I'm going to use Secure Properties Vault for that secret. That's the way I get, I, I have a secure way to start, but my other secrets can be rotated and managed. You see what I mean? So this one secret can't because it has to be in my encryption file, right? But the other secrets can. So we're going to we're going to basically consolidate down to a single secret that we have one way to manage that's not in Azure. And then we have access to all the other secrets that get all the power of Azure Key Vault. The default credential is here because the latest version of the Mule connector has added a they're trying to add a new way to access the Key Vault and it's probably most useful on runtime fabric. If you're running runtime fabric on Azure Kubernetes services, default credential might be better than the app registration, but I'm not. I'm running on AnyPoint Studio <laughs> and I'm running on uh, Cloud Hub. So I can't use default credential, or at least it's not gonna be any better than app registrations, right? Default credential is there because there is a more secure way to authenticate to the vault, right? If you can be inside Azure already, Azure knows that you're a particular identity without any password, without any secret. It, so default credential is, it, it pro provides the opportunity for an even more secure model if you wanna run inside Azure. So we have to have Mule running inside Azure for that to work. <laughs> and we don't usually, unless we're using Runtime Fabric with Azure Kubernetes service. That's the only probable way. So my that's my suspicion is that the default credential is there for customers who are running Runtime Fabric in Azure. Um, so that's that's that was added in the most recent version of the Key Vault connector, um, which I don't know when it came out, but since it was after my last presentation, so <laughs> it's been it's, it's kind of new, right? Um, so that's authentication. Now we got to talk about authorization. We know who you are. What are you allowed to do, right? We're going to use Azure RBAC. Role based access control is how you assign rights to a identity, right? So inside Azure Key Vault, there is a role assignment called Key Vault Secrets User, and that's the minimum permission. That's the right one to pick so that your Mule application can only read secrets. And this is if you want to give it rights to the entire vault. So I'm going to show you that you can do the whole vault or one secret, and they're both possible with Azure RBAC. Um, so we're going to put my client secret inside the uh, inside secure properties vault. That's how I'm doing it. I'm doing option one. Uh, you guys can definitely do option two, but somehow this secret has to be hidden. And you, this is the secret of all secrets. So you have to be very careful to provide the client secret in a safe way. Um, so you, in Cloud Hub, you, we're going to do it a couple of ways. We're going to do, I'm going to do secure properties vault in my demo, which is what you probably all been waiting for. Um, so I have a little Mule application. I'm going to show you how to use Mule to get a secret out of Azure Key Vault and use it to access Redis. So I will do that after any questions that have come up in the chat since I started doing all these slides. Um, we have a couple of them. Um, yeah. So first, there's a recommendation that they use Psychotic that you mentioned. Uh, oh. And they, see, they said that it's similar to HashiCorp in that sense. Um, then we have a question. Please explain the statement about the certificates. That does not work. What do you mean that you cannot use cert-based authentication? HTTPS connectors look like they're working this way, or please give me more detail. That's by Edward. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Okay, so Thycotic, I got that recommendation. Um, so let me go highlight so I can come back and look. So I've got a recommendation for IBM, right? Let me put that one on here. And I got a recommendation for Thycotic. So this, this, is, this is the community. We're at work, guys. You are making the next presentation happen. <laughs> so I have, I have the tips. Thanks for that. All right, next. Certificates. Okay, that's perfect for my demo. So I'll just work that right into the demo. 
uh, so that'll that'll be fine. So let's um, uh, let's let's look at the picture one more time. Where's my? Oh, it's at the end. Here we go. So we are doing this demo, and I'm going to start at the bottom then, so I can talk about certificates inside Azure Key Vault in particular. Although I have not found any connector that can do this. Um, and this is actually a good excuse to talk about MuleSoft's Secrets Manager. You guys know MuleSoft has a product called Secrets Manager, right? So I'll start with that. <laughs> um, it's, where is it? It's inside like, one. it's inside the security docs. They moved the docs around on me recently. Here it is. So there's a product called Secrets Manager that does not do what this presentation is about. It doesn't do that at all. <laughs> its only job is certificates right? And it's only job, it says it does passwords, but they're only passwords for certificates, <laughs> right? Um, so it, it's, it, it provides the secrets behind Cloud Hub 2 is what I've been told by people in my meetups. I didn't have any reason to, I can't find that in the documentation. Somebody told me this is where the Cloud Hub 2 secrets go. I would love to find out if that rumor is true. I don't know for sure, right? But what it has been used for for years is the storage of certificates. Right. And using those certificates in Runtime Fabric Appliance, which is now end of life. So that doesn't matter. Right. Or more importantly, um, it, it's being used for secrets in API proxies on API Manager. So that allows me to deploy a certificate to a secrets manager and have my proxies use it. Right. So I've always wanted to do that in my Mule applications. Right? I would love for my Mule applications to incorporate the secrets from secrets manager. The problem is they won't. You can't do it, right? There's an issue that I haven't conquered yet, and maybe some of you know how to do it with certificates, where the if you wanted to make a TLS context, let me go, where is it? Is it in here? Yeah, TLS context. The TLS context cannot be created um, dynamically. It has to be it has to be created from files on the hard drive, right? So, or you have to have a path to a trust store and a path to a key store. So if, if the, 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 the certificate comment with Azure Key Vault has to do with this challenge. In order for my application to host a key store, which is where the certificates are, the key store has to be available on the class path or the hard drive when the application starts up, which is too early for Key Vault. So what I'm planning to do eventually, I have an issue in my AnyPoint Cloud GitHub, is to make an my own version of the Azure Key Vault connector that can provide a TLS context at runtime because that's not capable of doing it. And the, the, the key vault connector we have now gives you a way to get the certificate, but not to make a TLS context out of it as far as I can tell. And if somebody has actually solved this problem in the community, we need to make a blog because everybody has this problem. This is, this is common, trying to provide a TLS context so that you can rotate certificates without rebuilding your applications. Wouldn't that be nice? Right. So if you guys know how to do that, that's the issue. So I'll show you in Azure Key Vault. So here's the Montreal Meetup Key Vault. I could make a certificate and I would love to do that. That would be my favorite. <laughs> I could put my certificate in here. I could get it signed. And then when it's time to rotate it, I could rotate it. And I would love for that to be what my MuleSoft application uses in order to authenticate. Right. The challenge is the TLS context. There's, I have not yet found a way to make it use these certificates. So before I move any, actually, I can go back to the meetup. Did, did somebody have the answer to my dilemma in the chat? I don't I see any, any answers. Come on, guys. <laughs> this is important. And so that's one of the things I have. on. So in any point cloud, so you guys see what I'm doing here. I've got this GitHub.io repo. Eventually, this is going to be the website. I put all these issues in here. And that's the only reason I have Azure Key Vault Connector in here so I can get certificates. <laughs> so if somebody wants to take issue six, it's I put it in there in August. So I'm trying to get this, what does the community need? I'm trying to make this thing a place to put that, and then we can work together on, on doing that. But I didn't mean for this presentation to be marketing for any point cloud. So let's do Kivo, <laughs> right? So, all right. The part of Kivo, so keys and certificates are a very powerful tool in Azure Key Vault. Um, for use within Azure. The reason they're here is Azure load balancers and Azure um, app services and Azure Kubernetes can all use these certificates directly, um, which is a very nice 
feature if you're inside the Azure world, right? But if you're a mule, you're not in the Azure world. You'd like to use those too. Uh, that's what the connector should be doing, I think. So what we are able to use are these secrets, but I don't have any in here. So we're going to do a little tour of Azure provisioning after we do Amazon, because I want to do a side by side and let you guys see the difference. So this, this, I have Amazon up and I have Azure up at the same time, just to give you guys kind of a tour of both. And I, I also have HashiCorp up, but we're not going to do that one because I don't have a connector. So <laughs> that one's just sitting there. So AWS has a million services. That might be an exaggeration, but it does have a lot. Um, and one of them is called Secrets Manager. And all you can do in, in Secrets Manager, you're in a particular region, right? So I should have been in Canada Central, but I'm in U.S. East Ohio right now. Inside that region, you have one list of secrets. See this? So I can make a new secret and I can put in plain text, just like Azure, or I can put key value pairs. So this is like my best meetup secret. I wonder what, what should I put for hit for this? How about Montreal? Oh, that's a good value. All right, let's put that. And I'll hit next. <laughs> and um, and this secret's going to be, actually, well, let's do like example. Let's call this an example. And I'll put next. And you could turn on automatic rotation. Isn't that awesome? But I'm not because I don't want to write lambdas right now. And I'll hit next. And we will save, store our secret. And so now I have to hit refresh. I've got a new secret in here called example. And it, it's it got the uh, the value in you. Know, one of my one of my issues with, with, with AWS is they're a little sloppy with this admin interface. If I hit retrieve secret value, I can just see the value. And that seems to me to be a little bit, I don't, I don't know, probably insecure. I would rather it be masked here, but that's what, <laughs> that's what they do um, in AWS secrets manager. But it, this has been around for a while and a lot of companies use it and maybe you guys use it. And at least it's inside the Azure portal and you have to be logged in and all that stuff. So that is the Amazon sort of way of doing secrets. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this one because I don't need that one. Actually, uh, not, I'll do it after the meetup. I'll clean up after the meetup. So I have one here that I made for Mule to access. Meetup slash MuleSoft slash Montreal. And that actually has my... I can't, I'm not going to show the secret because it'll show you my password. So I'm not hitting the button. Um, but that has my Redis password in it. Right. So that's the the AWS sort of uh, data model for secrets. So here is the Azure one. So at Azure, you have many key vaults. So I have a bunch from other meetups. I have some from my real stuff, everything. And you can tell what's my real stuff because I put it in South Central. <laughs> but um, this is so I have made a Montreal one and I put it. You can make a key vault in any region. Right. So if I hit create, and I'm going to do like I could put it in. Uh, Canada East, Canada Central, you know, and then provision the vault. Now, I already made one for this meetup and I set up some of the security, so I'm not going to finish creating this vault. So in the end, you end up with with multiple vaults. So that's the first difference with Amazon is you get as many vaults as you want. So I made one called KV Montreal Meetup 01. I think I'm following close to the Azure standard naming convention. Azure likes you to put the region in things. I didn't put the region in this one. Um, anyway, um, your key vault has an IAM access control. So if I click on this IAM access control and I look at role assignments, I can see all the users of my organization that have access to this KV, this key vault. So you can have access to the whole vault, right? And there's one here, Ryan local client app at the bottom. That's my, that's my service principle that I created. Um, so let's go make you guys a service principle just for the meet meetup. And uh, I'm going to leave client up for, for in here as well, because that's what the demo works with. But I want to show you in case you want to make one, um, how to do it. So we're going to go to Entra. Now that's the right place to go. <laughs> that's the new name of Azure Active Directory. And we're going to go down to App Registrations. And we're going to make one. And this is going to be called SP Montreal Meetup 01 and register. So I just created an identity. This is like an like kind of like a connected app in any point. It's like it's got a it's an identity for software to use, right? 
Um, and it has secrets. So this is in intro, you make seek you can have multiple secrets and they can be rotated and expired, right? So I'm not going to make it one, but you would normally generate a client secret here and the value would show up here. Watch out. It's real easy to confuse. Actually, I'll do one so you can see it. So this is example secret. And I'm going to make it expire like tomorrow. So does Montreal use MMDDYYYY because I hate it? <laughs> is any, this is the yeah. worst group format ever. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> Me too. And I think it's horrible. Uh, uh, 24, 24. We're in the new year, aren't we? There we go. So I'm just going to make it good for one day. We're going to add a secret. <laughs> so you see there's a secret ID and a secret value. If you copy the ID, that's useless. Never copy the ID. The value is what you need. And you copy that, paste it, put it in your software. I'm going to throw it away anyway. So that's how you make a service principle so it can log into stuff. And then you go back to Key Vaults and you assign a permission. So roll assignment. I'm watching the time. I'm going to speed through this. <laughs> you would assign the you would assign Key Vault secret user to the new um, identity, and then in your Mule application, you have an Azure Key Vault config. So there's two connectors to be used. I put them both in here. There's a properties provider and an Azure Key Vault connector. And as of the last time I tried it, the properties co provider connector conflicts with the service secure properties connector. So I wasn't able to use it. However, this time I built the app, it did not break the startup. So it might be compatible now. Anyway, I got in the habit of using the regular Key Vault connector. And the main difference is Azure Key Vault Properties Provider puts the secrets in when the application starts up. And Azure Key Vault connector allows you to get the secrets directly. See? So here's my implementation. Basically, I just go get a secret with an enricher pattern. See? And secrets have a data model, so you have to get the value of the secret, not the name, not the expiration, right? The value. And then use it to access your Redis. So you can put, in my case, I have a dynamic property, Redis password. And it's already all set up because I got this ready before the meetup, so you guys would see a little something. So if we use MuleSoft Advanced REST Client and hit our flow, it's going to go use the secret to access Redis. Oh, there's no password there. I wonder if I planned that. I guess we better put a secret in the vault. So I'm going to go get my Redis password. <laughs> the logout failed. <laughs> it wasn't able to do it. Let me show you. It's got this error. It says, oh, resource not found. There's no Redis password. See that? <laughs> so we better put it in. We're going to use my AnyPoint race test password. I wonder if any of you guys know about the race, anypointspeedway.com. It's another community thing. Um, <laughs> we're going to go in the key vault and make a secret Redis password. So I could call my Redis admin and say, you do it. So I never would have to touch the password, right? So we're going to create it. Oh, I forgot. I have to be the other user. There we go. Let's try that again. I have different logins to Azure. <laughs> now, what's it talking about? I wonder if it's because I already deleted it. I think I did. So what I'm going to do, it keeps deleted passwords for a while. So I'm going to do Redis password two <laughs> and create that one. And then I'm going to have to make the application use that because I deleted the Redis password right before the meetup. So I would get to show you guys that. So it almost worked perfectly. <laughs> so now I'm going to use Redis password two here, right? Almost demo that demo almost went flawlessly till that last step. <laughs> All right, Redis password two. Let's let it restart, and we should see the password get retrieved. Is this is your meetup limited to exactly sixty minutes, guys, or do we need, are we allowed to go over a little bit? We can go over, I think. Okay. All right. <laughs> I was a little nervous about hitting sixty minutes, but all right, we are ready to run it. Now it's gonna go get the secret. Oh. It got the secret. I wonder, it was trying to get the secret, uh, and it did a retrieval from Redis of best meetup. And we got back Montreal. That's the, that's the, uh, the, the big finale. So, <laughs> all right. 
Um, so that's kind of the basic idea is you go get a secret. So the nice thing about this design, the reason I use this design with the get secret is now I don't have to re reboot my app. My app can just stay online. And when a secret rotates, it gets the new value without a restart. So I kind of like that. So, yeah, so that's the demo. Uh, I suppose I should go back and see what you guys have to ask and comment and complain about. Complain, complaints, comments, and questions. <laughs> Maybe compliments. <laughs> Yes, Iqbal will be sending the uh, PPT and recording as well. Um, we have, a, I think it's a recommendation from Iqbal. He says you have to create a TLS context within Secret Manager and then use it. Use that in the app instead of creating a global of the app. I think that's in context of when you're talking about creating TLS context in Secret Manager. Yeah, I have. I've created them there. I have not yet figured out how to use them in a Mule app. So that would be a great demo. I would love to see that. Community at work. And you guys, you realize this matters, what we're doing here, that cybersecurity is one of those, it's, it's one of those architecture concerns that doesn't come up until too late. And then it's too late. Right. <laughs> so if we can be, you know, make sure that we've got our house in order, when we have coding practices and standards um, in our integrations, then it's not going to be the integrations that let the bad guys in. I mean, and they're coming, right? The systems we manage do very important things for our companies. So they're coming. <laughs> There's plenty of bad guys out there with pl plenty of crazy ideas of what they want to do to our customers and to our employees. So cybersecurity mm -hmm. kind of matters. True, true. Ryan, we have a question. Like, are we going to add cybersecurity to our AnyPoint Speedway? Uh, <laughs> oh, some of you guys know about the Speedway. Yes. <laughs> um, let me show you a little, if you want to see. So the, the, the public information about the Speedway is here on AnyPointSpeedway.com. And there's our top competitors from Season 2. Um, so... I suppose I could show you a little of what's coming up in season three. It's yeah. not getting, I mean, there's, there's some, there's a surprise that you, I'm not going to give away, <laughs> but let's go. I'll show you where, where the challenges are going because the challenges. So first of all, I've got two factor on, so that's a little bit of security. Um, I don't think I had, I think, I think I have a PGP challenge in there. So at least one, <laughs> let's go look. Um, three, one, three, six, nine, one. <clears throat> so Speedway, I'm going to go in design. So the way I keep my, the way I make my sort of backlog of things I'm going to add is in the race API, I have a bunch of commented out resources. So you guys are, I probably should stop the recording, but whatever. <laughs> this is a community thing anyway. Um, I've got, uh, let's see what I got it's coming up. There they are. Here's, so all the challenges I've got coming up, I've got an OAuth 2 client. Yeah, that's the very next one is an OAuth 2 client. Right. So that's a little bit of cybersecurity. And then what else is coming after that? Uh, there's PGP. I've got PGP coming. So, <laughs> yeah. So basically I'm, I'm creating, these are called practice tracks. I'm creating little tracks for you to go practice a REST client or a server, a SOAP client, a SOAP server, just different kinds of integration things. And yeah, I've got two for cybersecurity. And I, you know, if you, if anybody wants to give me more ideas, um, uh, I could imagine some more secrets management I haven't put in here yet. So that seems like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have a question from Dali, I think. And if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I'm sorry. Uh, which role in MuleSoft roles is responsible for the security questions? Which role in the C4E? Or in, yeah. the, in the MuleSoft yeah. role? Uh, yeah. Probably he's thinking about the Center for Enablement. Um, and I don't know if there's an official C4E role for security policy. Um, so it seems like there's a platform architecture. Like the, the use of a secrets vault would be something that the platform architect probably would be responsible for, right? Because you have to have one. You have to go buy one and you have to, you know, go up with who gets to use it. So that seems like a platform architect responsibility to me. 
What do you guys think? I think so too. Uh, platform architect, I yeah. guess, would be the one knowing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, it means like we can read the uh, rest of our slides. Yep. You want me to share it? Yeah, please. And while Ismith is sharing, I just want to say thank you so much, Ryan, for joining this meetup. It was lovely having you. And you. hope that in future we see you again, your pretty face, uh, in the <laughs> meetup group. Thank you so much for uh, joining today. And also thank you to all the participants for uh, like raising their questions and uh, joining this meetup. You're welcome. And I'm sorry I made you the villain in my... <laughs> 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 And we're really looking forward to meeting any and all of you who's going to attend TDX in person. Uh, so please say hi if we are not there. Oh, we have a question, I think. How long does it take to restore configurations and control pay in case of intrusion? Very long. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a project I really think the open source community I really want there to be a MuleSoft open source community you might have noticed that um, there's a project started in MuleSoft consulting called the Terraform Anypoint provider that would make it very easy to restore the platform if it worked but it's incomplete and we need lots of people's help adding resources to it it doesn't even have Cloud Hub 2 in it yet so we need that to be we could if we had Terraform we could just hit a button and it would fix it Mm -hmm. yeah. Good question. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Shivam, you want to take it from me? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, we would love you guys to share your feedback. You can also uh, go to Twitter and uh, use our hashtag at the hashtag Muse of Meetups. And uh, please share your thoughts uh, on LinkedIn if you want to. Don't forget to uh, tag us, Muse out of Meetups or Muse of Community. And invite your network to join uh, a lot of meetup groups, uh, especially Montreal meetup group, because it's the best uh, meetup group uh, in the world, as Ryan said. And uh, any feedback, fill out the survey feedback. Uh, after this meetup, we're going to send you guys a feedback form. Please don't forget to uh, you know, uh, fill it out. And for any questions, just contact us at uh, meetups at musoft.com for ways to improve the program. Uh, thank you so much, guys. And thank you, Ryan, for joining us today. And uh, we will see you guys uh, in the next meetup and uh, we will be stopping the recording now.